Hi there. You, like me, may be fascinated by big things that get built and then saddened when they're abandoned. So let's talk about a superhighway, one that's newer than, well, the Appian Way. <laughs> well, this one was murdered, but it's being reborn. The Lackawanna Cutoff is a 30 mile long section of a railroad that went from New York to Buffalo. It was and is amazing. It gave the world faster access to the interior of the United States from mountains of coal, swimming pools of milk, people, and so much more. It opened on Christmas Eve 1911 operated for 75 years and was abandoned. Our next video is going to give you more. U.S. railroading began around the year 1800, <laughs> depending on what you call a train. By 1869, they went coast to coast. Remember Promontory Point? As the 1900s neared, bigger trains wanted to go really fast, so they needed better routes. The Lackawanna Railroad was very profitable back then. They decided to build a straighter road from the top of the New Jersey Highlands down to the Delaware Water Gap. Now that's the door to Pennsylvania. They got rid of 42 curves by using big cuts, huge viaducts, and ginormous fills to knife through previously impossible terrain. This straighter road didn't just minimize left or right turns, it also didn't go up or down. <laughs> well, ignoring that it's downhill from the highlands to the gap. The designers picked an elevation and then they made the earth conform to their vision. The line went over, under, or through all obstacles. Hills were typically split. It's called a cut. And the material is used to fill a valley, raising its floor to where the track is planned to be. The biggest of these is the Pequest Fill. It is over three miles long, 110 feet high, and took over seven million cubic yards of material to build. Turns out that the cuts didn't have enough material to give to fill the valleys, so they had to dig pits everywhere to borrow rock and dirt. They chose to span one valley with the largest reinforced concrete structure on earth. And it, it's called the Paul and Skill Viaduct. It's also known as the Hainsburg, and it's a quarter of a mile long, has seven arches, and stands 150 feet high. Wow, but think about this. It and the similar but smaller bridge across the nearby Delaware River were only practice for the ginormous one they built in Pennsylvania. The Tuckahannock Bypass has the Nicholson Bridge. It was finished four years later and became the ninth wonder of the world. Wow. Back to the Lackawanna Cutoff. By raising the road above the valley floors, there were no ground level crossings. And by making the road straight, neither right nor left, up nor down, trains could go at an easy 70 miles an hour. Hmm? Freight trains could traverse this segment of the line two hours faster. So is the lesson to always take train rides? Yes, but no. The lesson is that you should have a vision for the important things you want to achieve in your life. Now these do not have to be complicated. I intend to, whatever, hmm? whatever, but, and there's always a but. You have to have a plan to take your vision and make it a reality. Plans are not dreams. Plans are the detailed, ordered descriptions of what you're going to do. 
Hmm? Getting to a plan involves considering alternatives, resources, timings, and risks. A good plan, a very good plan, even includes considering what's going to happen when an oh crap shows up, lies down on your doorstep, and trips you. By the way, the cutoff has the Roseville Tunnel. It pierces a hill where a cut was planned and even begun. Turns out that the rock was so unstable it would have collapsed. It was described as being like Roquefort cheese. Now, I don't understand that, but I do understand that a plan can be modified if you have to. And another, by the way, in 1958, a dozen cars filled with cement ran away from a Y atop the highlands. They rolled downhill at maybe 80 miles an hour. A curve 29 miles away helped them go swimming in the Delaware River. Hmm? Australia just had a much worse runaway. A train, four locomotives, 268 cars filled with iron ore rolled downhill for 57 miles. Wow. It was deliberately derailed to get it off the track. <laughs> you think someone got fired with that one, huh? What do you think? Tell us. Alas, by the way, the $11 million originally spent to build the cutoff is worth some, oh, a third of a billion dollars today. And yet, 40 years ago, they abandoned the whole thing. A developer bought it, and all he wanted it for was to take the fill to New York City for some sort of project. Oh, it didn't happen. The state of New Jersey took it back. They are now putting tracks back where they were. Hmm? At least somebody smartened up. I am Mike for the Be More Better team. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate it. We want to remind you that you lift yourself up every time you raise someone else. So be more better, body, mind, and spirit, and then be even more better when you help someone else see and then achieve. Tell us what you think and if you like us. Subscribe if you haven't. Follow us. <laughs> and now a shout out to Charles Walsh and to Tara. This has been a pleasure. Until the next one. Bye now.